All right, we're going to continue on here with Josh Berry, driver of the number four Stewart House Racing Ford. If you have a question for Josh, please raise your hand. We'll get a wireless microphone to you. But before we start, Josh, we have a new sponsor, a local Georgia company. Mm -hmm. Could you please tell us a little bit more um, about your new sponsor? Yeah, no, we're really excited to have uh, Decisely Insurance on the car this weekend. Really good looking car. Purple should stand out on the racetrack. So we're excited to. Welcome into the sport, uh, you know, first race for them, first race for us. Uh, it's exciting to continue to bring new partners in for us amidst, you know, everything that's going on. So, uh, yeah, they're, uh, uh, you know, a, a benefits-based company here in Georgia that's grown really fast, and this is a home race for them. And we're going to have a, a bunch of their uh, employees and, and partners with us here this weekend, so we're excited for it. Awesome. We'll go ahead and open it up to questions. We'll start with Jacob Seelman. Jacob Seelman, Race Face Digital. Josh, uh, with how SHR really as a whole has performed recently on the super speedways, and I think your performance upticking again, do you, do you view this as the opportunity to maybe play spoiler this weekend? Yeah, I think so. Um, obviously, we had a we had a really good car Daytona, a lot of speed. Obviously, was in a great position there until we weren't. So uh, we feel like. You know, we had a, a strong car here in the spring. You know, I feel like I've grown and learned a lot since then. You know, I, I put us in a hole uh, speeding on pit road in the spring. So we've ironed all that stuff out, hopefully. And, and I think if our car, you know, car handling does matter a lot here, uh, just because how the, how the draft is, how tight the track is. You know, you can tell the cars that are comfortable and, and handling well. So, I mean, if we, if we can check those boxes at the beginning of the race, I think, you know, we, we stay out of trouble. We'll have a shot at it at the end. How do you balance over these last 10 races wanting to really finish off strong for SHR in its current iteration, but yet also trying to maybe take some notes for uh, moving over to the 21 car next year? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, nothing's really changed for us. I mean, obviously, um, we would love to be in the playoffs, but – uh, you know, we, we've been trying to work. We've been working all year trying to get better. Um, it's been a little up and down, you know, but we've had a lot of great races. We've had we've had a couple bad ones, but we've had a lot of great races in there, too. So I think we're just going mean, to we just need to keep trying to, you know, just really be more consistent. Really, that's all we're lacking. You know, it, it's pretty apparent when we when we have the speed and 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 we, we might find ourselves to the front. We pass cars. Um, we we get up there. I think for us, we're just trying to nail out a little bit more consistency, uh, enjoy these last 10 races together, right? I think that that's a big part of it too. And obviously Chase being in the playoffs was great for the company. Um, you know, drove, he drove a fantastic race, you know, last week he really did. And, and I think between really both of us, I think both of our cars were fast enough to win and, and he was able to get it done. So that was really cool for, for everybody at the company too. Additional questions for Josh? Okay. Hey, Josh, Doug Turnbull for PRN and 5 to Go podcast. It's, I was just thinking about how there's four Stuart Haas cars, and every one of you all has a redemption story, so to speak, that landed you in that ride. And then how this story takes this turn this season, including some of the close calls, even, even last week at Darlington where you were right up near the front toward the end. Do, how, how do you stay grounded during all that? Do you pay attention kind of like your own story and, and ride, ride, do you ride the waves with it all and struggle with it or, or do you just kind of tune it out and leave that to us to generate the storylines, I guess? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, to be honest, the, the last couple of years have been like a whirlwind. And I think even sitting here today, not I never would have thought it, I would be in this situation, you know, that this would all happen like it has even this year, right? Like, um, I don't even know if I really know what to expect anymore. I think uh, just, you know, obviously, you know, proud of the job we did this year amidst everything going on. 
Um, obviously, to, to land an opportunity with the Wood Brothers and the 21 car is something I'm really excited for. That's a great group, great legacy in the sport. Um, obviously, you know, a ton of backing from Ford and Team Penske and, and everything that I think that is – that's, I feel like, a um, group and, and – uh, you know, being a part of that program, I think, is going to really help me grow and, and work on some of the things that I need to do better, um, you know, on the track. So, but aside from everything else that's been going on, I mean, I think none of us would have thought that we'd be in this position that that we have been in. But um, it is it is here, and like I said, we got ten more weeks together to keep racing and enjoy our time together, and then we'll all go our separate ways. Right over here. Have you had any con oh, thank you thank you very much have you had any conversations with harrison burton is it awkward at all or is it you just uh gentlemen about it and like you say you go your separate ways um you know not specifically obviously i reached out to all those guys after the daytona win and congratulated them but i mean we're all we're all professionals we're all been doing this stuff a long time and and there's no awkwardness or hard feelings there um obviously cheering for those guys i mean they're in the playoffs they're focused i mean i'm staying out of everything they have going on they're they're focused on their playoff run in these ne next few weeks and and i'm gonna let them do their thing josh we look at this race we being the media and the fans wild card anybody could win this thing do you have that in the back of your mind knowing that when they drop the green flag here tomorrow that you, you've got as good a shot as maybe anybody else out here to come away with a W. Yeah, I think so. But, you know, I mean, it, it, I think these races kind of ebb and flow. Some weeks, you know, you definitely have the races where it seems like, you know, just, if you just survive, you get a good finish. But then there's sometimes that, you know, the cream really does, you know, rise to the top and stays up front the whole race. I mean, I think it's, you know, it's really uh, important to have your car handling good uh, you know where you can race up front all night and then yeah there's definitely some fate involved in in being there at the end and um but yeah i feel like that you know this we have a good shot as anybody coming here uh, we just have to have to execute and stay out of trouble yeah, let's come up front chris murdoch nascar.com josh you kind of touched on it earlier can you sort of talk about what Briscoe's win last week meant to SHR and as a whole and what it did for the shot morale and uh, maybe the mindset going into the playoffs, especially at a race like this, to keep that 14 in the title hunt? Yeah, I mean, I think it was just, you know, it was just a really cool moment for everybody there, right? I mean, um, you know, there's been a transition period ever since, obviously, we, you know, there was the announce that, you know, they were closing down and selling charters. You know, we lost some people initially and then now who's left is is the people that are going to ride this out that are you know the, the racers that are not going to quit on us and and keep building fast race cars and doing everything they can to get in victory lane and really you know i know that everybody's been working extremely hard all year but especially recently um trying to do everything we can to make that push to hopefully get a car in the playoffs and go to victory lane so i mean it's a big deal to to win a race like that and like i said he did a great job and you know, who knows what's going to happen these next 10 weeks for them. But, you know, I know it. I, just getting there is, is a big deal, and I think we all recognize that. Do we have any additional? Okay, we'll come to Dustin Long. Dustin Long, NBC Sports. Josh, um, the last two weeks, you've kind of had these unique ties to the last two winners. It's certainly been a dramatic couple weeks for the sport. Uh, with the Woods and, and, and your teammate. What is that like to be, kind of have those ties? And does that, in a long season, reaffirm things? Or does that frustrate things? Because you're like, I could have been that, that guy. How do you, because it seems like it's a very unique situation you've had the last couple of weeks. No, I don't, I mean, I think that, you know, obviously, um, you know, the Daytona win, I think that was, you know, that's great for their program, right? I mean, it's a huge deal for the Wood Brothers. I mean, obviously, yeah, I'd love to win the 100th race, but, you know, it was Harrison's day and he capitalized and won. Um, but it's great for that program and the Wood Brothers that, you know, I'm going to benefit from next year, right? So um, it's exciting for them. And, and, you know, same with Chase, right? Like, I think that, um, you know, that was really exciting for everybody at Stewart Haas to see that win and, and the job that those guys did. and. And um, it's a big morale boost for everybody. And like I said, we're gonna nothing really changes. Everybody's been working their guts out all year, trying to 
trying to win races, but you know, it's still cool to get a reward for all their hard work and um, it was fun fun to see that for sure. Um, you know, I think one, really the only thing that sticks out to me, I think throughout the whole thing is like, just thinking on how important it is to win a race to make the playoffs, man. I mean, even, I mean, I, I wouldn't, not 100% sure on this, but I would say what some of those guys that missed it were probably 11th or 12th in points. I mean, it, it's so important to win a race when you get the opportunity. I think that's the biggest thing that I've taken from it, you know, the last couple of weeks going into next year is that if you want to make the play, playoffs, you better plan on winning. So obviously the focus has always been winning, but after, go, after seeing that, how did you, I guess the mindset or what you start thinking about if you're in a situation where you can win or in second type of win, how much more aggressive does that, do you think that'll make you in the future? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, you just, you know, obviously if you get in those situations, I think, I mean, it's, you know, capitalizing on it is incredibly important. I mean, I think, you know, we talk about points and we look at the points, even as a team, we look at them all year long and stage points and this and that. And then you come down to it, and unless you're in the top ten, you're probably in danger, right? So, you know, really, unless you're in the top ten or you're racing for the regular season championship or something like that, then, yeah, the points matter. It's just – I mean, they, they do matter, but it's just it's just uh, such a unique scenario, how, what's happened, how it's played out the last few weeks, having those new winners. And, um, yeah, I don't I don't know that really my mindset changes any way or any, you know, anything, but, I, you know, it's hard to – you know, if you're going to fall back on points, I guess I'm saying you better have a lot of them. Any final questions? Okay, John. John Newby, Alt Driver. So, Herb, you know, in February, a lot of the drivers were surprised by how the track surface has kind of aged. I was curious, do you know what to expect this weekend? Um, yeah, it's definitely changing. I mean, every time we get here, it looks lighter and lighter, um, you know, the asphalt color. So, you know, it's going to continue to evolve. Obviously, it's, it's warmer this time around. Um, you know, it's not, it's not going to be super hot, but it's going to be warmer. So handling should be, you know, a bigger deal than maybe what we had in February. But, um, yeah, I don't know. At this place is, it's kind of coming into its own, I feel like, over, you know, the next few years as it continues to age a little bit and lose some grip, it'll be really interesting to see how it plays out into like a, you know, kind of a hybrid between a super speedway pack race and an intermediate track. So, um, I, I, like I said, I think handling's going to be more important uh, this time around than February, but you know we'll have to see. Any last questions? All right, Josh. Thanks for dropping. Thank in. you. Great job, driver.